So welcome everybody to episode 22. 22. 22, 22 already. Can you believe 22 people that we've talked about that had encounters with Jesus? And that's what this is all about. And just speaking about Jesus while he was here on earth, but more important, the people that he met and the impact that has made on their lives. And the lives of those around them. Definitely. And it's always a ripple effect. I think anything Absolutely. with Jesus is always a ripple effect. There's, you know, he encounters one person and it just grows and grows and grows into something big. You, you know, you say that we didn't prepare to speak about that. But, you know, while you're speaking about that, Bart Takeda, you think about um, your story. Your mother receives Jesus Christ. She prays, if I'm not mistaken, your father into the kingdom. Yeah. Is that how it works? And then from there, you as a family are led into the kingdom. And now you find yourself full-time in ministry and, and, yeah. and, and, and. And you've had the privilege of ministering around the world now as well. But all because someone's life was influenced by Jesus. And, and again, I think we give a lot of people the credit. You know, we always speak about the disciples spread the message of Jesus Christ. I'm not sure they did the whole job. I think it had to do with the people Jesus encountered and how they went mm. and started to tell their stories and how that influenced their families. And, and again, I don't think it was just the disciples that spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Uh, yeah, I think other people's stories and encounters. Yeah. And that's why it's so important that we introduce people to the real Jesus, the real Jesus, not the religious one. I agree 100% with you. So there was a man again in the Bible and in mm. John that met Jesus. Um, and interesting, he, he met Jesus, but he, he never knew it was him because he didn't see. He uh, couldn't see it was him. See, I love it. I love it the way you just kicked that off. <laughs> that is very cool. <laughs> Born blind. Just, just think about that, partner. Think about that. Born blind. I mean, a little later in the scripture, the man says to the Pharisees, he says, it's a man and they call him Jesus. Born blind. Never saw him. Yeah. Never saw him even after the miracle because we know what happens at the end of the story. Jesus has to introduce himself. But born blind. And I think this, this is a kick-started yes. a lot of theological <laughs> debates just like because jesus said he wasn't it's not because of sin of his parents or anything like that no. and people were like yo you know sickness is a curse and when you sin and yeah everything's just thrown out with the beginning of that so here's this man he encount jesus encounters him in on a sabbath day puts mud on his eyes and tells him to go and wash off the the mud and then he'll only be able to see so it's this is where it starts off so he hasn't seen jesus yet he actually doesn't know who this person is here yeah. and then he encounters the religious people or the pharisees again they come and ask him who did he encounter and he he gives quite a, a couple of straight answers well you know what's you know what's interesting about that um so like you say man's blind jesus stops but puts mud on his um, eyes, and then sends him in his blindness. Now, that in itself, <laughs> that in itself yeah. is a story. Because a desperate situation has led this guy to be obedient, even though he feels incredibly vulnerable. Can you just imagine, I mean, I, I, I know you now a little, and you know me a little, but there are things that we would allow Jesus to do easily. Yeah. But then there's another story of people spitting on your face and putting mud all over your things. And now you're walking in blindness, knowing that you're all dirty. And uh, it just doesn't, <laughs> you can just imagine how uncomfortable mm. this must be. But he gets there. And then, interestingly, he washes his face and now he can see. And he obviously starts to testify to his neighbors. And then that obviously starts to cause a whole chaos around him. And then they take him off to the Pharisees. His parents aren't involved yet. But then I get to where you were right now, where they said to him, um, who's this man? He says, I call him a prophet. Doesn't even really know who he is. He just says, I call him a prophet. And the reason why I want to um, highlight that is because a little later on, he calls Jesus something else. Yeah. And I think that's also important as we're dealing with people. To realize that some people, they have a journey with God before they get to where, yes. where you think they should be. 
And I know how strongly you feel about this. I know some of your friends and the people that are around you. You know, we'd like people to call Jesus Lord now. Hmm. But what they might be, have, they might have been walking in a blindness. They might now be in a process of a conversation, actually not even understanding who touched them, not having any knowledge of where that person is. But in time, there's going to be another introduction. And maybe you can... Yeah, look, I, I just want to also... You know, we, we always look at this guy and the, that Jesus had encountered, but we forget also, I think, um, Jesus says that this guy will be healed for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And just to put a bit of context in it, this whole scenario was with, once again, the Pharisees challenging Jesus because he, he actually called himself the Son of God. Mm -hmm. So the two things that he did wrong was, first of all, he healed someone on the Sabbath day. Second of all, he made mud. So when he spit on the ground yeah. in, on the Sabbath Great day, point. that is seen as you, you're working because you can make mud. So you're not allowed. You have to find a, a tree or a rock where you can spit on. And then the third one was that they had a, a tradition of sage, which they called it, um, where if they couldn't find out who, if somebody out of wedlock, there was an older son and the son that needs to inherit everything, the firstborn son, mm. um, they would do a test and call it the, the sage where he would spit and that spit had healing power. So wow. this tradition was a Jewish tradition that they, that they exercise. And now Jesus is coming to prove them. Like I'm the, I'm the I firstborn. I never knew that. That's brilliant. For the, and I think the whole story is also he's displaying his glory, not just to this person, but once again to the people that's been going at him the whole time, breaking yeah. him down. He still attends to their time as well. He still wants to let them know, listen here. Yeah. I'm in here for it. I want you guys also to see. I want your eyes to open as well. The grace of the religious. Because exactly. So, so he deals with the blind and he's actually dealing with others that are spiritually blind. Yeah. You know what's crazy about that as well is um, when the conversation starts between the Pharisees and this blind man, who do they call? They call his? Parents. Parents. Yeah. And what's frightening there is that his parents are so fearful of the religious leaders that they aren't even willing to, um, you know, stand up against them regarding their son. They literally turn around. They say to you, they say to the guys, "Listen, yeah, uh, we know this. This is our son. We know he was blind, um, but regarding who touched him, you ask him that yourself. Yeah, we don't want to get involved. We don't want to get involved. I mean, if it was your child." I'd look at anyone in their eyes and say to them, listen here to me very carefully. This is my child. This, I can tell you that they were blind. And quite frankly, I don't care who touched them. Hmm. And I can tell you guys right now, you won't be touching whoever touched them because yeah. I'm going to protect that person with my life. But they are so fearful. And I think sometimes in the church world, people can become so fearful of the religious. Hmm. And again, you and I have been in conversation about my own journey and understanding the message of grace, growing with people. But these people, they're not even willing to defend their son in totality because of religion. That's yeah. scary. Uh, also with that, because the, the, they were scared to be banned out of the synagogue. That's yeah. what the, so the, obviously someone... That message was distributed. Like no, you if you, go if against you acknowledge us. Jesus, if you say yeah. that he is the son of God, this is what's going to happen. Oh, you're, out. You know, you're out of this. So obviously there, there's been talk in the town of what, about what's happening, sure. what's going on. And just we shouldn't entertain talk like that. We shouldn't, no. you know, we, we shouldn't spread that message. We need to spread the good message of what's, what's going on. Yeah, I, think, I think we've got a responsibility to each other. Yes. To keep each other accountable and try and say, hey, let me strengthen your journey. But I don't think it should ever be said in a tone or in a way that threatens our journey. No. I was saying. But anyway, uh, his parents are scared. But when they speak to him, he then obviously goes on his way. And guess what? He gets kicked out of that community of faith. They reject him. And then what does the Bible say about Jesus over there? So Jesus went to look for him. Uh, oh, That's uh, Bart to Kenny, that is the key of this whole thing. Jesus wanted to go look for him. That one sheep, <laughs> literally that one sheep, he's part of this whole flock of this community. I, I, just, I just think that's incredible. Hmm. That's incredible. They've just kicked him out. 
Jesus hears. So Jesus has healed him. Jesus is busy with other stuff. Now he hears that he's been kicked out. Jesus goes and fetches him. Walks up, introduces himself and says, Listen, yeah, you know, what do you think of this man? He says, he says, it is I. And there beautifully the guy says these words. He says, Lord. And, and I think what's special about that is, yes, the scars had a miracle. But more than the miracle, he's now experienced the love of God. Mm. Jesus coming to meet him. Jesus mm. coming to sit down with him and have a journey with him. And in that time, the Lordship happens. And I, and I, and I think uh, if I could say that to some of the people that are watching today and to myself and to you, I think that's just something I want to highlight. Um, yes, God is doing some good things for some people. But be patient with people as they come to the Lordship mm. of Jesus. Some of them are going to have to just be in a little bit longer yeah. conversation. Sure. So just to wrap it up from my side, I'm loving what you're saying. And, um, you know, we, we've so many times this guy, he, he received the miracle. Obviously, he heard about the guy that... The man they called Jesus. The man, they, you know, he might be a prophet. He might be a teacher. I'm not exactly sure. But when Jesus comes and, and really finds him and he has this real encounter with Jesus, that's when he acknowledges him as Lord. And that's my prayer for everybody, to have that real encounter with Jesus. Okay, okay, can I throw one more thing in? Please Just do. roll it in. They ask him to leave at the end, but he's okay with leaving because he knows something else <laughs> touched him. He was willing to leave what he knew. Because he'd receive something he did not have. Yeah. May that be said of our churches and even of our own journeys. That when people are confronted to leave their lifestyles, they're willing to leave their lifestyles because they've experienced something else. Mm. When we're encouraging people to leave certain things, let them be willing to walk away from those things because they've experienced a power of God. Yeah, like that old hymn says, you can have the world, but give me Jesus. But give me Jesus. That's amen. all. That's it. So thank you very much for for tuning in and joining us today. This was really a great, great Love one, it. great episode. And I hope you were blessed by it. If you were blessed by it, please share it with others. Mm. Subscribe to our channel. And uh, you can listen also to the audio on Spotify. Nothing but love. Nothing but love, friends. Let it be.